Hello, hello. Good evening. Good evening. Yes. Good evening. How's everybody doing? Yes, man. Okay. The rain has stopped, right? Did it stop outside? I hope so. I hope so. Okay. So I'm feeling better about that now. The rain has <laughs> stopped. Good energy right now. Welcome on into another edition of our Minorities Mental Health 2023 edition. And it is all about our mental health goals. Because, of course, when we get a brand new year, Ryan, yes. you start thinking about all these different things and everything that happened last year and what's going right. to happen this year. So, we're going to help you all out that, that without uh, tonight. I'm Persia Nicole. You can hang out with me Monday through Friday. 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. on 92Q. And right across from me is a lion's right, den, honey. Right down the hall, baby. Come hang yeah. out with me inside the lion's den. Of course, weekdays, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, Magic 95.9. We have a whole lot of fun while you're on that J-O-B hanging out. But uh, we're going to have a whole lot of fun tonight because we're going to talk about some good things, uh, some good feelings for 2023. We got some goals to set, Purge. Yeah, we got some big goals to set. Big shout out to our sponsors of the night, yes. Shepard Pratt and 211 Maryland, for helping us put this whole amazing event together. And we got a lot of guests, right? Absolutely. Uh, let's not waste any more time. Uh, first guest on our amazing panel tonight uh, is none other than Timothy Allen Kidd. He is a Senior Director of Rehabilitation and Recovery for one of our sponsors, Shepard Pratt. Timothy, how are you, brother? Hey, good evening, good evening, good evening. I'm doing well, well, well. Missing Jeopardy, but I'm doing well. <laughs> for a good cause, though, for a good cause. You ain't recording, Timothy. What did you say, Persia? You didn't record it? I don't know how to do those things, Persia. We talked about <laughs> this. We already talked about this. Uh, oh, man. Well, see, that's what we're going to work on, some goals. Yeah. We got to set some goals. Oh, man. Uh, but, Timothy, uh, let's kick things off, man. Starting to get to uh, know you a little bit better. Tell us a little bit about what you do um, uh, with Shepard Pratt. Okay. Hi. Um, thank you again, Persia and Ryan. Um, thank you, 92Q, and definitely Shepard Pratt and 211 for sponsoring this. As I said, my name is Timothy Allen Kidd. Nickname is Brooklyn. Middle name is Brooklyn. Um, I'm the Senior Director over at Shepard Pratt for the Rehab and Recovery Division. Um, currently, um, I provide leadership to programs in Baltimore City, Baltimore County, Harford County, Carroll County, um, uh, and a couple of other programs. What we do is we provide, like I said, great services in the rehabilitation program, um, helping individuals just live a better life, you know, giving them the tools that they need. So I'm really privileged to work for an organization like Shepherd Pratt and actually to be here with you guys, you know, definitely talking about minorities and mental health is so, so, so important. So I'm looking forward to meeting my other panelists and, and taking some questions. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Well, 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 let's kick it off. Yeah, let's yeah. get right into it, man. Uh, questions for you since we got you here. Uh, you know, tonight's theme is all about setting mental health goals, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we know goals are a good thing to have. It's measurable, right? You can see if you're, you know, you're you're reaching your goals or where you're lacking or, you know, are you exceeding? Um, mm -hmm. But when you're working with, you know, your patients or clients, um, mm -hmm. what are some of the things you you do to, to help them set goals? Mm -hmm. Well, what's really interesting is, the most important thing is to breathe, breathe through it. You know, um, what we need to realize is that setting a goal or not setting a goal does not make or break you, you right. know? So um, we just try to get them to think about the things that they want to do, not society's pressures on what you should be doing or how you should live your life, but what do you feel like you should be doing? So, you know, we just get them to think about the things that they like to do, things that they want to do, and we just help them break those things down um, into small increments, but sometimes they're big increments, you know, and we just try to get them to understand that it's okay to have a goal and not meet the goal, mm. you know, so we try to get, it's, it's okay, this this goal thing is, is a train, it's a train and, and there are many stops towards your destination, you know, so if you need to get off the train to get yourself a little snack or something, get yourself together, it's okay, get off the train, regroup, get back on the train, focus, and you can knock it out. Right. You I still like get that to your destination, right? Definitely, you can still get to your destination, all right? It's a destination. Yeah, I'm gonna use that. I'm like, excuse me, I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right back. Right, make, sure you, make sure you credit me with the saying, okay? Oh yeah, yeah. Timothy, I got you. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Let's bring on in Natasha Peterson for Springboard Community Services. Natasha, hi, hi everybody. Hi. I'm great. How are you? Fantastic. Welcome Let's hear a little bit about who you are and what you do over at Springboard. 
Sure. So my name is Natasha Peterson. I'm the Director of Client Services uh, for the Baltimore City Office at Springboard Community Services. So I oversee um, all of our programs and services within our building from case management to behavioral health services. We have a foster grandparents program and we have a youth resource center. And we also manage uh, the services um, at offsite locations. And so I'm a licensed clinician by trade and I'm just happy to be here with you all tonight. Glad to have we you. need all the experts we can get, honey, tonight. <laughs> yeah. We are excited about this because I have my own personal questions that I have <laughs> asked. Y'all get ready for the ride. We <laughs> all need to know. all out there. <laughs> And, we got um, one more, right? Yes, we are not done. Our next guest for the evening uh, is no stranger. Uh, he's definitely done these things with us before. Uh, he is the CEO of 211 Maryland. Please help me welcome the one and only Mr. Quentin Askew. What's going on, Q? Hey, good, after, good evening, everybody. How you doing? All right, all right. Welcome, brother. Welcome. I feel like y'all cousins or something. You done call it. Nickname. Yeah, it should be. It, it's the voice. It's hard. It's hard to say. I don't. I don't have any Jeopardy. Uh, you know, experience like Timothy. but I'm here. I'm here. So, Q, for the people who uh, are not familiar with you, man, uh, tell us a little bit about um, you and what you do with uh, Two Eleven Maryland. Yeah, so definitely appreciate 92Q and, and, and Shepard Pratt and uh, our friends Natasha um, with Springboard. And so with um, 211, we are by law the Health and Human Service referral line for the state. And so, you know, basically anybody who has a cell phone, a uh, home phone, they can dial 211. We connect them to one of our partner uh, call centers across the state, um, specifically in Baltimore. We work with our United Way of Central Maryland partner. Mm -hmm. um, and so someone can contact 211 24-7 to get help with um, I need food. I need, you know, counseling. I just want to be able to talk to someone. Um, and so 24-7, 365, we connect them to someone who's empathetic that will listen and provide them a resource or service from where they live. Man, that is absolutely important and necessary. Wow. Thank you very much. I'm glad that's the service that's available for us, man. Because Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, yeah. Uh, we know mental health is such a serious and important topic. And um, to be able to have this uh resource here tonight is an amazing thing and i hope people are taking full advantage of this because uh we're gonna get into some stuff tonight hope so looking yes, forward to it we are. and as you see the bottom emblem at the bottom uh, you can ask a question put it in the chat if you're on facebook yes. youtube 92q.com if you're on magic wherever you're at enter in the question where to get our experts to answer them for the night i want to do like a quick um icebreaker because okay. I feel like that's always good, right? A little quick icebreaker, yeah, right? Absolutely. We can all be cousins. This is Ryan and, and Q are cousins. <laughs> you know what I mean? Natasha and Timothy, let's add into this. Right. Um, when you, do you have, any of you have goals or do you have New Year's resolutions? You say every year, this is my resolution for the new year. Timothy, do, do you set your resolutions? No. But um, I do, there are some things that I, I like to work on. You know, definitely um, health is really important. Um, but, you know, health is important and mental health. You know, physical and mental health is important, but um, I'm actually committed this year to trying to work with some of my male friends around toxic masculinity. Mm. You know, I want us to stop telling little black boys to man up and stop crying. Mm. So, so that's where, that's what one of my goals this year. You know, I've talked to my barber and a couple of people. We're always talking about toxic masculinity, you know, and how that affects us as black men, you know, especially as we're talking about mental health, you know, what is going into that? So. I want people to stop telling little black boys not to cry and to man up. Mm. That's my that's my goal. Mm. That's good, and it's big in our culture too because it happens a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you know, just even a little caveat. I mean, my son plays youth football, and uh, to hear you know how some of these grown men talk to these kids sometimes, yeah. um, it's like, Ugh, I'm a parent, and I get mad sometimes. I don't even talk to them like that, right. you know. <laughs> uh, so yeah, absolutely, absolutely, very important. It, yeah, it is. It, it, it's definitely tough. And actually, I, I coach, you know, youth sports myself and, and, and <laughs> basketball. And, it, you know, and I, I'm thinking of what Timothy's saying, right? And so, you know, years ago, that was some of the language I would use. Like, what you crying right. for? You're not hurt. Get up. You know, right, right, right. right. As, as you get a little bit more experience, you understand, you know, how that might affect someone. So he, he's definitely right with that. Yeah, yeah. That's a yeah. great point. A great point. And Quentin, what is, what is a goal or resolution for you? Did you set one for this year? I, I, I set one. I don't know how well I'm doing with it. I think, you know, <laughs> mine, mine is really, uh, you know, just... Taking more me time. I, I think, you know, kind of being able to know how to step away, uh, set boundaries. I, yeah. I was, you know, really terrible at that, you know, and, and just trying to do too much. You know, feeling like, you know, again, as a man, you got to want to make sure you do it all. You want to be held accountable for everybody and do everything. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I guess just being honest with yourself, like I, I just can't do it all. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, that I'm definitely trying to be better with that part. Yeah. What about you, Natasha? Mine is kind of in alignment with Quentin, you know, prior prioritizing my own needs, right? And protecting my peace. Mm -hmm. We tend to take care and do everything for everyone else, but we sometimes neglect ourselves. So, you know, mm -hmm. put in put in ourselves first sometimes. It's okay. Absolutely. That's definitely Ryan, what's your resolution, Ryan? Well, you know what? I mean, I hate to be a piggybacker, but I am I am learning the same kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm one of those um people that just I dive in and I go like tunnel vision. I'm working and I work so much um, sometimes that I don't realize that I'm not taking care of other things. You know, I'm taking care of all these things, but mm -hmm. there's so many things that I'm not taking care of. Um, I'm not spending a lot of time with my family because I'm always working. Mm -hmm. uh, so this year uh, I made it a, a promise to myself and my family. Look, I'm going to spend some time. Uh, I'm going to take some days off. You know what I mean? I'm going to. Uh, or make sure that we plan some trips together and uh, get back to having some quality time because I, I absolutely miss it, man. I absolutely miss it. So definitely one of my things for for this year. I mean, you have a gorgeous family, so I uh, love that. Thank you, thank you. Natasha thank is self care queen. Because <laughs> okay. because springboard will go. Natasha, wait a minute. She said, "I got to take off a whole month, y'all. I ain't gonna be here." <laughs> <laughs> Don't call me. I need mean, my real time. What about yeah, you, first? Right. Oh, um, so for me, I mean, I think I'm gonna be a piggybacker too. I mean, I think we're all, I think as people too, we have, we become yeah. more in tune with ourselves and we realize we need more of us time because if right. I'm not happy and I can't please Persia, I can't please nobody, right. you know, mm -hmm. then I'm not a great wife. I'm not a great mom. Like I'm not a great daughter because I'm not great with myself. So mm -hmm. definitely more me time, um, more time with family, um, just more time, just receiving um, some good things in my life too, as well. Because I put out, I think, a lot of different things, and I, I forget. I, I it's okay to receive. It's okay to, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. say so like true. you're doing great too. Like you know, right. we're right. so busy doing that, and we forget yeah. that. Hey, a little bit yeah. about us. So, yeah. so mm -hmm. that's that's mine. <laughs> You know, so we all, you know, we got some good goals. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, again, the theme tonight is about goals. And, uh, you know, Timothy, I want to uh, jump back to you because we were talking about goals earlier. Um, and you had some great points on, on setting those goals. You know, it's not so important, you know, about being so adamant about, oh, if I don't uh, do this by this time or this date, I failed. Um, so when you're talking to someone, you know, um, how do you approach it? Do you tell them, you know, take small goals or do you tell them, you know, shoot for it? And if you don't make it, don't worry. Uh, what's the best way to go about it? Asking them what do they want to do? You know, we spend a, we spend a lot of times trying to dictate to people how we think they should live. You know, right. you think, you know, if someone says I want to be a professional basketball player, we immediately start saying stuff like, well, you want to get into an, uh, a, a basketball camp. You want to go to a good college as opposed to saying to someone, let them develop their plan. You know, and, and, and what we can do is we can feed into their plan by offering them resources. But the minute we start taking control of the plan, it becomes our goal. It becomes our goal. And, and we're getting suggestions from you, the client, on how you want to achieve the goal that we've set for you. So I think the best thing to do, and a lot of times we, we don't give people the credit that they deserve. You know, we tend to think that folk just don't know. Folk know. Folk need some encouragement. So you want to you want to have a conversation with people. A conversation is always best. And, and, and we need to be clear about letting them guide it. So, you know, what I would do is I would say to someone, you know, what do you want to do? You know, what are you good at? You know, how do you see yourself? You know, and, 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 and get rid of all these buzzwords, you know, like, what do you want to do? You know, um, we tend in our community to get stuck on the buzzwords. You know, and sometimes, sometimes our folk look at us like, what are you talking about? Like, what are you talking about? You know, so we need to be real and have real conversations with people. What do you want to do? You know, once you decide what you want to do, I'm here to help you get there. And if we need to take some bumps in the road, it's okay. If you change your mind, you don't want to be a basketball player. You want to be a chef. It's okay. You know, we tend to have these deadlines for things and people get so stressed out about the deadlines. No, as long as you feel good about progressing to whatever you're doing, you're winning. Drop, Mike. Because I was, I was all into it. 
You had to take a sip after that one. <laughs> okay, right. What I loved about that though was, um, I mean, he got real to the down to the nitty gritty. I mean, he said real conversations, you know. I mean, and that's um, so important if you're trying to set real goals, right? I mean, you you really need to get real information to set achievable goals for yourself, okay. um, and, and and that. I'm sure is a lot more feasible for anybody that's dealing with anything um, mm -hmm. or going through anything that's one that wants to reach anywhere. So mm -hmm. great advice, man. I'm trying to tell you tonight, my <laughs> minorities of mental health, we are setting these goals to 2023, right? I mean, I'm, I'm ready, man. I'm, I'm about this tonight, man. I, 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 I want to see myself better. I want to see my yeah. brothers and sisters better, you know, living better, feeling better. And um, you folks have done an amazing job throughout your careers helping so many people do just that. So again, big shout out to you. And uh, if anybody has any questions, please post them up there if you're listening. And, and I was, you know, as Timothy mentioned, I think it's also, you know, I think those questions we need to start with our youth as well and our kids, right? What right. is it that you want to do? Because I think, you know, we sometimes put our goals and our, our you know, what we want our kids or youth to do, and, and they kind of just follow in that direction, right? Then we grow up as an adult doing what somebody else wanted us to do. And as Timothy said, then we confused and, and you know, and, and, and not well because, you know, we never did the things that we wanted to do, reach our own goals. And so I think those important conversations we need to have now, as, as you said. And that's so cool. that's yeah, yeah I've, I've seen all the chimes that everybody's chiming in for Facebook. I think it's so dope that people right now and whatever, wherever you're adding, whatever element, like your home, like maybe it's with your, with, your, with your family or your friends just watching. Like, I think it's so cool to have these conversations yes. and it's open and it's free. It's just it's a good place to be to have a regular conversation. Like we're not talking at you. We're talking together. We're having a conversation. It's organic. And this is the type of platforms that I love to have. And I'm excited about this. Shout out again to uh, Shepard Pratt, 211 Maryland, for this amazing event. I want to take it over to Natasha really quick because, you know, in our culture, we have a lot of excuses why we shouldn't be dealing with mental health. And I think since the pandemic, and really before that, but really since the pandemic, we've seen a lot of mental health issues. Uh, what are some excuses or different uh, people, you know, they might say, oh, I don't need it because of this, or, you know, hey, that's just my cousin over there, like, he's fine. What are some big excuses that you might hear um, with some people that you deal with over at Springboard? Oh, we hear lots of them, right? And, and I'm sure we're all guilty of having them yeah. you know, ourselves, yeah. right? But I don't have time. Or I'm going to pray about it, which is great, right? But, you know, there are tools and people here to help you through. Not feeling, you don't, you don't have to be on, you do it by yourself. But, you know, I don't have time. Um, I am, I, I'll, it'll, it'll pass. Or I'm going to pray about it. Mm -hmm. Or um, I, I don't know those people. And there's just a big stigma associated with mental health, right? And talking to a complete stranger, what, what is talking about it? Going, how is that going to help me, right? And people don't realize how therapeutic that can be um, by having that impartial, neutral person who is trained and skilled to help you know, guide you through some of the most trying times of your life. So we hear everything from A to Z um, or, you know, people with their priorities. They they tell you what, you know, they what they think you want to hear. And mm -hmm. like Timothy said, it's about you. This is not my life. It, it, you know, this is your goal. So if you want to go to the moon, hey, how are we going to get there? Right. <laughs> and so, <laughs> you know, and we, we definitely try to instill, you know, hope and empower and encourage people and let them know you really can do whatever you want to do if you if you want to do it. Right. And so we can always come up with some type of, of excuse for for some, not doing something. But what ways directly after they come up with this excuse, like, do you say, how about this? Write down some things that you feel like you might need to deal with. Do you go in that direction? Like, how can you redirect them and take them out of that excuse land? Because, you know, we, we all have been there where we've made excuses, like you said. How do you help them get out of that? Absolutely. Try to be proactive and get ahead of those bar you know, those potential barriers. So mm -hmm. identify, have you tried this before? What worked, what didn't work, or what got in the way of you reaching your goal, right? And mm -hmm. what do you anticipate might come up that stops you from, you know, seeking employment or, you know, whatever your goal may be so that we can, you know, get ahead of it before it even happens. And so then when it does happen, it doesn't throw you off guard and discourage you or you just completely give up, but you're ready, 
right? And so you can't prepare for everything, but there are some things you definitely can prepare for. Mm-hmm. We're preparing for this year, honey. Yes, indeed. Right, right. <laughs> he prepared to take himself off the mute. <laughs> He just talking away over there. Yeah, he was having a whole conversation. I'm just like, yes. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> preach, preach. But it's so true, so true. Uh, and, um, you know, Q, I want to bring this to you because, um, you know, we talk about all these different things people go through, right? Just life in general sometimes yeah. can be real tough, right? Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, just like currently we've been experiencing all these mass shootings this year. I feel like it's worse this year than than last year's ended. Um, but, um, and one of the incidents that happened this year, the guy that, um, the, the shooter, he was mad that he had to pay a hundred dollar bill to fix a forklift. And he was mad about getting bullied on the job. And this, I believe, you know, after reading that, I was like, man, this was something that was so preventable. Like Mm -hmm. if he just had an outlet, somebody to talk to. And I feel like, you know, a service like 211, man, he could have picked up the phone, called somebody, just got out his frustration, got it out. And that whole scenario would have been totally different. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. And I think, you know, a couple of things that sometimes people don't know what what help looks like, like when, when, when they're in the moment, because they're just in the moment and they're going through crisis. Right. right? And so sometimes it's really hard to, to see or understand what you need. Um, but it, but, but it is good. You know, we, we're lucky here in Maryland that we have this you know, easy access number 211 that anyone can call. Um, you know, we we are able to connect anyone, uh, which is, you know, again, the crisis line now, which is 988 um, for the state to any you know crisis services that we have here. And so one of the things we, we also kind of make it easy for folks. Right. If you don't want to uh, call us, you can text us. Right. Mm-hmm. So you, you can text your zip code to 898211 or you can go online and chat with us because we know everybody who's in crisis doesn't always want to talk to somebody on the phone. And so you really got to meet people where they are. Um, and again, but they also have to know where the help is uh, because, you know, we always just don't know. You know, we always say like 201 is this, is this great secret that's out there. But if you don't know where to go, it's, it's really difficult, um, you know, but that's why we try to make it easy with this three digit number. You can just dial 24 seven. If you don't know what you don't know, you know, if, if you call that number, somebody on the other line can at least answer to say, hey, here's where you can go. Here's where you can call. Um, and so, you know, we, we've also set up a couple of, of things that will help people to stay engaged. Um, you know, Persia mentioned, you know, when COVID came, we all were isolated. So it was, it was really hard to stay connected. And so we, use, we also use texting as a way to stay connected with folks. And so we have a couple of different texting initiatives that folks can sign up for, even for our young adults. Um, you know, they can sign up for it. They'll get, you know, weekly ongoing supportive messaging. Um, they'll get someone that's able to, uh, to check in on them to see how well they're doing. And so, again, you know, we just really try to use this way of either call us, text us, chat with us. You know, it's like having a, a crisis council in your pocket, right? Mm-hmm. Wherever you need it, 365 days a year, because, you know, as we all know, it's necessary. Mm-hmm. So dope. And, um, you know, you mentioned the uh, the people um, answering those phone calls. Who mm-hmm. are those folks on the other end of that line helping all these people, man? Yeah, so they, they, these are great folks. These are folks who, who are trained. They are certified. They're crisis certified. They are certified in um, suicide prevention. Um, they're certified to be able to es- de-escalate uh, in any crisis need that someone might be going through. Um, and they're just empathetic listener. So it's somebody who's just on the other end that will answer your call um, and just listen, um, you know, with, without judgment, without, you know, telling you exactly, as Timothy said, like what you need to do, but really just listen and understand what it is that you are trying to do. And, 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 get, and guide you in the right direction. And so these are folks who, you know, have their uh, master's or bachelor's in social work um, or, and, and, or, you know, what is health and human services. But these are folks who, again, also bilingual. Mm. Um, and so, you know, if English is not your first language, you're able to call us as well because we can still either, you know, connect you to the resource that you need. Um, and so these are folks who have went through hours of training uh, in, in crisis and, and health and human services, but just ready to listen, um, again, with no judgment. That's what I'm sorry, Brian. Quentin, you said something I thought was really important, and I don't really know if we talk enough about it. Um, you know, we all do what we do. You know, there's radio personalities, that, but we have all got to realize that this thing that we call life is hard. Yeah. This yeah. is hard. You know, life is hard. You know, and life is extremely difficult if you're someone struggling with some behavioral health issues. Mm-hmm. You know, um, those who aren't struggling with behavioral issues are, are struggling. So, you know, if we approach all these situations with a little bit of humility that all of us, all of us are struggling. You know, all of you guys talked about, you know, your personal goals, you know, it's, it's self, taking care of self better. But this life is 
hard. Thank so you. as we're talking about these goals, we need to be clear with folk, you know, like we're all in this bubble together, especially those of us who look like us, we're in this bubble together and it's okay. You know, you're not demonized because you're a struggle. You know, your struggle is your struggle and right. you're not the only one struggle. We have to be really clear and let folk know that. Sorry for a little soapbox, but we don't no. We need that though. We this need is it all. Yeah. Yeah. We got to keep it real. We definitely got to keep it real. We got to, you know, get rid of the fluff. I mean, I think we've done uh, with that time. I, I think we need to get to the meat and potatoes. I mean, and, and we really got to address some, some real issues, um, you know, and um, one of the issues, I mean, we deal with stress, the anxiety, depression in our community. Um, I know that we are really just touching the, the tip of the iceberg when it comes to mental health and, and learning about it in our community. Um, so, uh, Q, I know um, we're still talking with you. Tell us a little bit about that program you have. Uh, I know 211 has a, a, a very one of a kind special program. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, we have, we have several of them. So we have we have one that we started about a year ago. Um, OK. What we call 211 Health Check. So, so that particular program came in about, uh, anyone, you remember Congressman Raskin's son uh, committed suicide about uh, two years ago or during the holidays. And so I'm again, someone who had access to all the resources and services in the world, but um, didn't feel connected. Um, and, and so we were able to partner with them and some of our local uh, delegation to create this 2-1 health check program. And so what it is, someone can sign up just by calling 2 one one um, they can sign up and what they, or they can, they can text us to sign up for this program. And so what happens is when someone signs up, they can schedule an exact time that they want someone to call and check on them on a weekly basis. You know, so you, you can call 211 and say, you know, Hey, my name is Ryan. I just want somebody, you know, give me a call eight o'clock every Sunday. Uh, mm -hmm. so every, every Sunday your, your phone, your cell phone will ring. Mm -hmm. uh, one of our, uh, phone crisis specialists phone will ring. They'll just check. Hey, Ryan, how you doing? Anything you need today, um, you know, if there's anything, you know, I'll, I'll connect you to a resource. If you if you say, you know, I'm all good, we'll, we'll check on you next week. And so you can stay connected for as long as you want or you can opt out and say, you know, I'm fine or you, you, you can jump right back in. So the goal is just to continuously have someone just to check in and just see how, how, how you're doing. Um, again, no, no judgment, no, um, you know, connecting you to anything you don't need is just saying, hey, hello, is everything OK? Um, and so and again, we'll, we, we partner with our partners with uh, the Maryland Department of Health. Um, the Behavioral Health Administration, who's helped us to uh, to get this going. But again, it's just someone to check on you on a weekly basis to say, hey, how you doing? Is everything OK? I love That's that. Awesome. What? I absolutely love that. I feel like, you know, when something goes on, you had a bad day or whatever, you might want to vent to one of your family or your friend, mem friend members, whoever it is. But like, it might still be like a little bit of judgment there. Because yep. they might call one of the other good, good girlfriends, one of your boys, like, did you hear what Persia has said? Like, you know what I mean? So just to call somebody and be like, listen, no judgment zone. This is what's going on. I, I'm just, I'm about to explode. And just really being able to have a conversation, that's a game changer. Because a lot of people don't have that with people that say they love them. Right. Yeah. That, that is huge. Or just so, the value of knowing that someone cares enough to check in on you, right? Yeah. Everybody doesn't, have, everybody doesn't have a great support mm -hmm. system, right? That Everybody's not, right. Um, you know, got that, you know, Hercules support system built mm -hmm. around them. So this is a, an amazing tool for a lot of folks. And I hope, I hope people get the message because this is what it's all about. Information, resources, and being able to uh, get to them. So, yeah. yeah. I think I, I, you know, I'm saying, like, with just life going on, right? So even, you know, you, you want to check on a family member, you want to check on a friend, but right. you got life going on too, right? right. You got kids, right. you said, you know, you got, you got to get your kids to sports. It's not like you don't want to. Right. Sometimes it's just right. the capacity, right. right? And so, you know, we have this free service that we have that folks can utilize. Because again, we all, you know, we can't, we can't stretch everywhere. We can't be everywhere, but, you know, but there's the resources out there for you. Yeah, I love that right there. Timothy, I want to take it over to you because I know there really shouldn't be any age to this, but do you feel like there's certain areas of life maybe that it's important, more important than others, that someone should be setting goals or mental health goals or physical goals or spiritual goals? Is there a certain point in your life where you're like, this should be happening here? Wow. Watch this doctoral answer. Okay. No. Let me hear. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. There isn't. You know, um, what's interesting is that as long as you can understand what you're saying and what you want to do, yeah. whether you're four years old or 104 years old, mm -hmm. you know, there is no age group. Now, the, the conversation with a four-year-old may be a little different than a conversation with a 22-year-old. But, you mm -hmm. know, our kids have goals, you know, 
Um, and, and you just got to just got to talk to folk, you know, just talking. And what's more important, something that Natasha team does and something that Quentin team does and something that we do all over Shepherd Pratt, all over the state of Maryland, where, you know, we are continue of services. You can come into the door one way and there's everything that you can get from Shepherd Pratt. You know, we, 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 we pride ourselves on being able to provide you what you need at every aspect of your behavioral health needs. Mm. But going, going back to it, no, um, as long as you know what you want to do and, and, and you're steadfast and more importantly, you got to do the work. Right. I don't want to sound like Oprah or your brother ran that, but you got to do the work, you know? We love them both. It's okay, Timothy. These things aren't easy, you know, especially when the frustration gets in that you don't feel, ready for this? You don't feel like you're progressing the way that other people think that you should be progressing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the problem. Yeah. That's the problem. That's when it comes to the age. You're like, oh my God, I- I'm 35. I'm about to be 40. All my mm-hmm. other friends that are 35 or 40 are doing this. And that's what they're like, I should be doing this or that. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like when it's your time and when it's your moment and when you feel like you're ready to do all these things that the other people that are this age is doing, then you will. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we got to recognize those goals within our community. Yeah. You know, a lot, a lot of times, you know, um, I was talking to, um, last night I was talking to a guy in a barbershop and we were talking about kids these days, you know, we're talking about how kids are being raised. And I said, you know, for us, the, you know, we were kind of raised based off the Cosby show. A lot of mm-hmm. us wanted that life. Yeah. You know, we, we went to college because we wanted Hillman. Mm-hmm. You know, we wanted that mm-hmm. Hillman experience, mm-hmm. you know, and now our kids are kind of being raised via the internet, you know, and yeah. they're having these lofty goals. And, and even if it is a lofty goal, let him have that lofty go. Let him feel how he wants to feel because the best experience sometimes is that life experience. You know, you want to be a surgeon, but you don't have any arms. Let's talk about that. Maybe, you know, we have a program at Shepherd Pratt Community Employment. And sometimes our clients will come and say, I want to be a surgeon. Well, you know, you're kind of, you know, you're suffering with paranoid schizophrenic. You know, you, you have a substance use disorder. You don't have any arms or fingers and you want to be a surgeon. But once you talk to people, you may realize that what that man wants is he wants to wear a white coat. Mm. You know, so it's not even about the surgeon. It was just him identifying that surgeons wear white coats. And his real goal was, you know, after talking to him, I want to wear a white coat. You know, so once again, just talk to people. And more importantly, listen. Mm. Listen, this is not you. It's not your life. You go through what you need to do. But when you're working with someone, be present for them. Mm. Mm. Timothy, look, I'm, I'm listening, right? I'm listening, and I heard there's so many gems in there, and um, you, you triggered so many things for me because um, this week, even leading up to this, um, you know, while I'm in the studio, I keep CNN on, and um, uh, I'm always looking at breaking news and, and what's going on. And one of the headlines that came across was parents, their the most fear they have is their mental health of their children with social media. And I thought that was so just mind opening because I'm like, man, it's so true. If as an adult, we know what the effects of social media can have on us, how we can get caught up scrolling sometimes. And, you know, you got to be like, man, let me put this down, you know, Uh, Mm -hmm. but for a kid, they might not have that strength to to pull away. Um, And also the Surgeon General just came out and said kids um, under 13 shouldn't have social media. Um, that's a big pressure on, on, on our lives, especially in our communities, you know? Um, so yes. I'm mad at that. Yeah. Under 13. Yeah. Like, wait, you know what, really quick, since you're talking about the kids and let's take it to the school system, speaking of CNN, I'm pretty sure on social media, you all have been seeing the videos. It was a young girl who like attacked another teacher in school. And when you talk about mental health, especially within our youth and social media, like they start to just like make these videos go viral and it becomes yeah. like Friend. Yeah, yeah. So then you get in your mind like, oh, I have to do this to become cool or I have to do this or whatever, whatever. Yes. And, and and it really hurts me to see mm-hmm. things like this happen. And people say, oh, it's just mental health. Oh, my God. Like mental health is crazy. These kids out here are so crazy now. But it just becomes normal. Mm-hmm. And it is now it's like normal now for these kids to be putting their hands on these teachers. Mm-hmm. And it's beyond me. Like, mm-hmm. I don't even understand why this is even a thing. Like when I was growing up, that it wasn't going down. Right? No, no, no. Yeah. no I, yeah, I think sometimes, you know, with social media and others, like we, like you said, we normalize that behavior. Um, you yeah. know, they, they watch it over and over and over and over and over again. And that's that's particularly what you see. 
right? And so you want to get those likes, you want to get those, you know, those, those those hands up. And so those are things you, as Timothy said, right? You connect to that. If I do this, then you know I'll get ten more, you know, ten more, hundred more followers, hmm. right? If I if I do this to my teacher, that's another thousand likes that I'll get. And so, and I think you know it's especially important to have those conversations with the kids because they they they're on social media all day. Right, all, all day long, and that's particularly all that they see, and it's kind of tough to, for them to understand what's real and what's not. Mm-hmm. Is, that, is that is that is that? Um, I mean, we all want to be loved, you know. Everyone wants to be loved, you know. But it's that whole validation that we've got to get out. You know, those likes are about validation, not achieving your goals and people being disappointed in you because you said that you wanted to drive a race car, and now you're not, and people are going. Well, why are you not driving a car? You know, all that is just unnecessary pressure. It's unnecessary pressure and that need for validation. As I said earlier, your goals are your goals. No one, absolutely no one has to like your goals but you. And if you want to change them, I'll say it again, change them. Mm -hmm. Be done with it. If you don't want to drive a car, don't drive the car. Let it go. Yeah, and, and you mentioned also, Virgil, you know, like as far as, you know, traditions, do you guys feel like, you know, particular traditions kind of keep us in that mode of, like, say, like you said, you got to be married at a certain age. You know, you got to have you got to have the job or the house at a certain age and those Absolutely. things, you know, how they bring barriers of, you know, again, not not understanding that, you know, those traditions weren't yours. They might have been your parents, but that doesn't mean they got to be yours. Mm-hmm. So right. And, so and setting that new reality for yourself. Quentin, do you get calls like <laughs> what, what are some calls? Do you get more relationship calls or is this more like work like what are some calls that you get that people have the most issues with i think you know we we get calls you know for a variety of different things you know it's you know i i need help with with rent i need help with food um i need help to to support i'm a caregiver or i'm an older adult looking for services um but the majority and and our highest calls are dealing with mental health um and and, and behavioral health folks that are just in crisis uh, just wanting to talk with someone and so our, our crisis counselors are, are really great um, to be able to kind of de-escalate and, and support that situation at, at the point of uh, someone calling. But the highest call volume that we currently receive now is just basically around mental health. Um, after mental health is housing. Um, but but we all know that, you know, if somebody calls with one issue, there's generally, you know, two or three other things that's going on. Um, mm-hmm. and, and so the great thing is that when someone does call, they may ask for that one thing. But through that conversation, they'll they'll help them to identify. Oh, you know, you you might need you know some help with rent, but we understand there's a food situation in the house, and then you know there's some other things that's going on. So we try to provide that kind of wraparound services for that support and that holistic support that you know we don't we don't just help the child, but we can help mom too, mm-hmm. right? And whoever else is in the house. And so um, those are I think some of the important things that if you just call that number, right? At least you'll we'll we'll, we'll try to help you know whoever is being affected by what the issue is. And who got time to deal with their mental health when Johnny don't have no school supplies, Johnny can't eat, yep. and mm-hmm. there's no food on the table? Ain't mm-hmm. nobody got time to worry about hearing voices. You're trying to provide for your family. That's right. You know, a lot of times as clinicians, and, and Natasha, you'll get me for this one, but a lot of times as clinicians, what we tend to do is we want to know why you're not focusing on your goal, You know, why you're not meeting with your therapist, why you're not going to see your psychiatrist, why you're not going to your groups. Well, Johnny need uniforms, you mm-hmm. know, got we you know, television and BG and E and food and medication, you know, for your somatic child, you know. So you got to get to the core of those things. And and surprisingly, what we recognize is that once we find the core of your situation, it it, it opens up. Yeah. You know, if we can help you with our case management or, or off-site programs to, to help you get your BG and E or get your, your license back together, then you, you you know you can begin to breathe and you can begin to deal with those other stresses that's going on because your main stressor is survival. Yeah. And I think it's important for people to be okay with asking for help. Like we can't do it all by ourselves. There's going to be a time where we we need someone to help us for whatever reason. And so it's okay to ask for help. You know, we're so used to just figuring it out or trying to fix it ourselves that we don't even realize the resources that are out there that could assist us with those basic needs mm-hmm. or, you know, with your mental health or whatever it may be that you need. So it's okay to ask for help. We all might need it at some point in our lives. Absolutely. And, and, you know, um, with you guys in your careers um, and and with everything that you do, uh, we see that the stigma 
of even asking for help is a problem mm -hmm. uh, in our community. What are some of the things or some of the ways you think we can, you know, um, change that? Or, or what are some of the things you guys are doing in the community um, to make that a different situation? Normalize mental health. It's okay to not be okay. It is okay. We're going to have bad days. No one is asking you to walk around. And we have to stop saying I'm okay when we're not okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and we and we often also ask people, you know, how you doing? And we don't even stop to really listen to the answer. We are walking past them. So be prepared because people, people are, are not okay, right? And so I think normalizing that will, you know, create um, an openness to receiving, you know, that support and help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think you know also being maybe being that first person to ask the person how you doing, because um, sometimes they may not perceive you as that you want to listen or you care about that, right? Because that's not a normal conversation you have, especially with your homeboys and your friends, right? That's not a general conversation we ask you how you doing today, or you know or how was your day. But I think you know we kind of normalize those those questions, as Natasha said, um, but also put out our own experiences in talking about it openly. I think that kind of opens the door, you know, for for our friends to be able to have that same conversation with us. Um, but you know, sometimes you got to be vulnerable, put yourself out there, um, and, and kind of make that first step, and and others might follow after that. Mm -hmm. Which is why my focus is on on our young black men and our brothers. Come on now, you know, um, we won't ask for help. You know, um, yeah. we're stuck in what we think this this idea of what a man is. You know, and I understand the historical perspective of it. You know, I get the whole mandingo. I get the whole taking from from us to to go work, and we got to be strong and provide. I get all that, but things are just different. We, we we as black men, we have got to say what you said, Natasha. It's okay not to be okay. It's okay, and I don't feel any less of a man because I say I can't handle this. And that's what we have to get, especially our black men to realize it's okay not to have the answer. It's okay to need the help. You know, it, it really is. And, we, and, and if I could wear a tattoo across my forehead, it would say, brothers, it's okay not to be okay. You know, it's yeah. okay. Let's talk about it. Somebody put a comment up on here. I think it said pride is one of the biggest struggles. Mm. Enemies, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the biggest enemies and struggles. Like when I, yeah, pride so is one of our biggest enemies. Yeah. That right there. And so see, true. that is the problem. We all have pride. We all, you know, you don't want to be seen as this person. You don't want to go That's ask for help. Right. You don't want to call 211 Maryland because you mm -hmm. feel like, oh my God, somebody's going to like judge me. No, this is our time to put our pride to a side. It's okay to not be okay. Somebody also did hashtag. That's going to be the hashtag of 2023. I haven't seen all the comments and like looking like, yes, yes, yes. Because it, it is okay. It's okay to call. It's okay to get these resources and use them for yourself, for your family, for your coworkers. We all sit and talk to our coworkers all the time. Like Ryan and I, we don't have that much time in between like commercial breaks when we right. eat and when right. we see each other. <laughs> right. You know, it's really well, quick. It's, yep. Yeah. Yep. It, it's okay. And we have to really make sure that beyond just tonight that we check on one another mm -hmm. and we make sure that we're good. Like, you know, just be accountability partners. And I think mm -hmm. that's one of my goals too of this year is to be, somebody's accountability partner where you can call me too and just be like, this is what's going on. Because we all have to have that. And 2-on-1, of course, is a resource. Shepard Pratt, great resources here. Like Springboard, great resources. So tonight, I hope I hope you got a lot of takeaways from this. Yeah. And I, I really hope that you're taking notes because I, if you see me looking down, yeah. I've, been, uh, <laughs> I've been in here like using all my notes section, putting all my stuff in here. Um, Natasha, let's talk about some programs that Springboard offers as well, because I don't think we got a chance to really touch and go deep into that. Sure. So um, our, we have four offices and, of course, I'm, I'm stationed in our Baltimore City office. And so we have a family violence program that's across all of the offices where we work with individuals who have some type of victimization. So whether it was you or you are a victim of fraud, um, intimate partner violence, abuse or whatever it may be, we provide intensive case management and support to those individuals. We also have a, a youth homelessness demonstration project program where we serve um, young people um, who are either homeless or at risk of homelessness. We have a lot of couch surfers, a lot of people who've been kicked out of their home prematurely or have experienced some type of uh, trauma, and they're just going from place 
the place, the place. And it's a really, um, it's really sad and unfortunate. And so we're there to try to provide um, support to them. We have a youth resource center um, where individuals can drop in, they can shower, they can wash clothes, get food, get those basic needs that Timothy mentioned. And then we kind of talk to them and dig deeper into kind of what's going on with you. What do you need? What? How can I help you? Right. And so we also have a foster grandparents program um, that serves individuals who are 55 years old and older, and they're placed in different um, child care centers and um, learning centers, and they assist teachers. Right. We know um, teachers take a special person to be a teacher and they need support and they need help. And so our foster grandparents are there to assist. And of course, we have the behavioral health services um, where we do individual therapy and we also have rapid rehab. Housing. So we are assisting our young people in finding housing in the community. So lots of different supportive services. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. We need all the support we can get. Yeah. And someone yeah. says, uh, we talk about pros and cons, physicians, therapists. Uh, yeah. I mean, actually, because people say there is a lot of pros and cons of doing this. Um, I think that's a really good question, too, because especially in our you know culture, we tend to think it's more cons than pros of seeing therapists and different physicians, different clinicians. So uh, let's talk about that. Who, who wants to dive in first? Normalize that, for sure. That's what yeah. we got to normalize. Yeah, no, absolutely. For, yeah, for that, I, I'll let the clinician speak to that, but I, you know, I have a quick example. So when I when I first, the first time I ever went to, you know, therapy and counseling, right, it was, it was um, I couldn't find a person of color, right, in an area that I was trying to, for counseling, everybody was full. So I, you know, in the first, so in my first experience wasn't really a good one, right? Because you're just not comfortable. You don't, you don't, you, you're talking, but you don't want to talk about everything because then you, you understand that this person able to connect and all the other things. And so, you know, um, but again, it, it was a great because I was able to at least get out what I at least have a conversation to at least start. Right. And that person got me in the right direction. Um, you know, and then I was able, you know, a little time after to find, you know, a person of color to be able to have that conversation, which, you know, I felt like I had that better connection. So I think, you know, it's, it's different for everyone. Um, but I think, you know, initially that first step, and Timothy and Natasha will probably say, is just, you know, finding somebody to have that conversation, you know, until you can get somebody that you are able to speak to. But I think, you know, initially for me, um, the, the experience was, you know, I, I didn't feel as comfortable until I was able to find someone, uh, you know, that I felt like I can connect with and, and talk to and be open with. But it was good just to have that first conversation no matter what. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm a firm believer that every therapist needs a therapist and needs a therapist, right? Mm -hmm. How can I show up for you and be healthy and present and support you if I'm not practicing what I preach and taking care of me, right? Mm -hmm. And so, the you know, there are a lot of pros. And, and Quentin, to your point, there are so many different clinicians, trial and error. Everybody's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. If you try it and you're not a good fit, it's okay find another one, right? Get on another waiting list if there is one. It's okay. Just like there's physicians and lawyers, if there's, you know, maybe it's not a good fit or it didn't work out well, you find another one and, and it's okay to do that, but do not give up because you'll find that fit that for you and you'll notice progress and, you know, meet your goals with that support. And so, you know, of course, I know people think about the, the stigma or, you know, um, what it would look like um, me seeing someone talking to someone that looks weak or, you know, all those things. But it actually takes more courage and strength to ask for help and seek it. Right. And we got to be real with ourselves and, and recognize when we need it. Right. We, we can't show up for others if we're not showing up for ourselves. Yeah, I, I agree with both Clinton and, and Natasha. Um, so I'm going to take a little radical approach. Work with me, guys. So what's interesting is I think that a trained therapist, regardless of your background, is a benefit and a wonderful thing to have. I think that um, Asian Americans can do great work with African Americans. I do. I think a good therapist is a good therapist. I also know for a fact that there are some similarities that people who look like me will understand and have a different approach in, in, in communicating with me. So do I think that all African-Americans should have an African-American therapist? No, I think African-Americans should have a good therapist, no matter what your therapist looks like. But I will say that there are some things within our community, within Black people that we get. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's not saying that any other community couldn't get it, but they're just some things that we get. 
Um, but I think a great therapist is a great therapist. You know, I'll be honest with you and transparent. The best therapist I had died about two years ago, a old, a old white Jewish woman. Used to see her in Pikesville. Best thing in the world. <laughs> The reason I'm sitting here talking to you now is because Denise was wonderful. So, you know, um, so I don't really think that it's necessary, but I do think that it's important. And to anyone out there, please, 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 we definitely need more behavioral health people who look like us, mm -hmm. especially black men. Mm -hmm. Please go to school, find an organization. Here's Shepherd Pride. We have tuition reimbursement. We mm -hmm. need more black men therapists for our young men and also for our young black ladies to show them the greatness of black men yep. you know so mm -hmm. short answer any any good therapist can be good small Absolutely. answer we need some more black therapists yeah <laughs> you, you have a right to have a preference i have people call me and be like mm -hmm. and you can tell they're a little bit ner nervous to ask but are you black <laughs> because they want a black, you know, they and that's yeah. okay. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. so used to being asked the mm -hmm. question because they want someone who looks like them mm -hmm. and can be relatable and understand maybe a struggle that maybe someone who is the opposite culture or mm -hmm. or um you know race may not get per se. And it's okay, you have a right, right? But it also doesn't mean that we will be a good fit, right? You know, so you can't sure. always judge it by that as well, and it's okay. Mm -hmm. And you can understand people, right? You you want to be comfortable, and especially if you're approaching something for the first time, yeah. you know, you want to be as comfortable as you can be. And uh, that's probably one of those things that people are just like, you know, uh, if anything, if they black, they're going to get me a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, definitely. Um, so uh, was that a question that just popped up? Uh, I think they were just a grin. Uh -huh. so okay. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> uh, because that is true. Yeah. One of the things, you know, we talk about is support. And, um, you know, I, I, I know a lot of folks just don't have it. A lot of folks just really don't don't have it. So what are tips, you know, for somebody that's going through something, man? And, you know, I know we got we have all the resources, but if somebody's not even willing to call yet, what is some advice? What's some tips that we can give those kind of folks in the meantime to, to, to hold on? Breathe. Mm. Mm. Breathe. Mm just breathe you know if you're not ready to make the call you know it's so funny i'm on my wall in my office i have these 18 things i know for sure and one of them is when you're not sure what to do don't do anything don't move don't talk don't do anything mm. so it's good to be at peace and be just be still mm. just be still until you're ready to pick up the phone and dial 211 to pick up the phone and call natasha to dial 410-938-5000 and say i need some help you know, um, just breathe through it. It's it's going to be okay. And if you are in one of those crisis situations, nine one one or two one one, let's get you some help immediately. But just breathe through it. We get so bogged up in our mind that because I'm upset, you know, it, it becomes, you know, it, it becomes so detrimental that you you know you're you're contemplating suicide when really you, your light bill just got cut off. Okay, let, let's find some resources. You know, um, some things are heavy, but we realize that a lot of this stuff is just the stress build up of how you think you're supposed to react and act. Just breathe through it. Mm -hmm. I agree, Timothy. And, you know, after you breathe, you know, I think it's important for us to, to remember the moment. We get so caught up in jumping ahead. Like, what are they going to say? What are they going to do? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know, we get so ahead of ourselves. And right now in this moment, what is it that I need? Is it that I just need to vent? Is it that I just need to cry? Is it that I just need, like, what do I need? How am I feeling? you know, right now. And so taking a moment to do some self-reflection um, is really important too. And to not get caught up in going ahead of time. Okay. Um, we get so caught up in playing and it's good to plan and it's good, good to think ahead, but not to our own to our own detriment to where, yeah. you know, it be we begin to get anxious or we just don't even move forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also in, in journaling, I, I just like to write, I write everything out, you know, um, and I think, you know, just as you say, getting a clear head. Of, of what's going, you know, with a clear head and clear mind, I think, you know, we can make some better decisions. But, you know, I'm always, you can see my desk now, I got stuff written down, like I'm in the, you know, 60s where we can't, we don't have computers anymore. And so I think, you know, just just being able to write write down your thoughts, um, you know, actually how you are feeling is, is, is beneficial um, to me. Yeah. What, what would you recommend for some uh, additional resources outside, of course, 211 Maryland, Shepherd Pratt and Springboard? Um, like for me, I, I'm in love with the Calm app. 
It just does something to my spirit. I don't know. Like ever since I got introduced to it, I love it. And I also love reading different things. I write poetry um, and also like websites. Like what are some things that you could recommend as far as just going to go read like a good book or just some things to get a good word? Uh, mm -hmm. Timothy, what, what are some websites you would recommend as well for that? Girl, you don't want me to tell you my websites. Listen. What? <laughs> Wait a minute, Timothy. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hey, we got to hear those now. What he's doing in Persia is, it's, it's, it's interesting because um, I don't know, uh, all jokes aside, I don't know any particular websites, um, but, you know, you have to be, you have to be ready and understand, you know, and, and, and recognize, is this, as Natasha said, is this really de detrimental? You know, so I'm sorry, I don't have any website, but you need to find out what you like to do. You know, um, I suffer with anxiety a little bit. So what's interesting is that my therapist taught me these two words. So whenever I'm having really crazy, irrational thoughts, um, I literally have to say those two words. You know, I have these two phrases I say, and it immediately gets me out of that space. You know, as Natasha said, being in the here and now, not worried about tomorrow, being in the here and now and just dealing with that, but find whatever you enjoy. Some people like to run, jog. I don't run unless I'm being chased. I'm not doing it. Some people like to exercise. I don't do it. You know, if you like reading a book, read a book, you know, find out what you like and then start associating those things. But, you know, um, there's this good book. And every time I get upset, you know, I'm going to grab it and read 10 pages to calm myself down. Some yes. people like to cook, you know, some people like to take long drives. So I don't know any, I'm not, I've heard about calm, but um, I don't know any websites. I just think people should find that thing that they really enjoy and make that their thing. Mm -hmm. You know, even if it's that one thing where when I get upset, I like to make biscuits. Make your biscuits when you get upset, you know, find your thing, not my thing, not Persia's thing, not Quentin and the Arthur, find your thing and make that your thing when you're getting a little special in your head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We, we work with a lot of young people in music or the arts, you know, are really what they're into and they can express, they might not be able to give, articulate or give you the words, but they can, um, you know, write a, a rap or a rhyme or mm -hmm. a song that reminds you or could to express how they really feel. Right. And so also, you know, if you are, you, into you know have a, a higher being or power that you believe in so you know you can turn to your church family the bible um different scriptures or or poems or things like that to uplift you and empower mm -hmm. you and remind you of who you are right mm -hmm. yeah. so lots of different um you know their calm app is amazing it is. Um, or there's some visual guided imageries on um youtube like you don't need it doesn't have to be anything family fancy just google Go on YouTube, you know, we're quick to hop, jump on, hop on social media anyway. So, you know, go ahead and Google, you know, visual guided imagery or calm music or something that will relax you as well and bring you back down to the here and now. <laughs> Deborah said, I like to eat, but don't listen to me. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, that, that's, that's me too. And I think, you know, I'm also podcasts, like I'm a big po podcast listener. So, you know, yes. there's, there's podcasts that can also support that. Um, and also, I want to give a shout out to the Black uh, Mental Health Alliance. That's also a yeah. great organization that can help support, you know, folks identify. But, you know, wh whatever it is, whether it's poetry, eating, you know, whatever, whatever that thing is, that's, that's what you do. Yeah. Find your, thing. Find your thing, yeah. not yeah. my thing. And yeah. don't listen to folk listening. Don't listen to people telling you, well, when you get upset, exercise. Because then you start stressing out, well, I need to exercise and pay $10 mm -hmm. a month for something I'm not going to do. Right. No, find your thing. This is your thing. This is your life. Right. And then you stress because you sweated out your edges, honey. Because this right. is a whole nother issue. That's the edges, right? Not the edges. <laughs> yeah, you you got to buy the Fitbit, you buy all the stuff to go to the gym, and then you know you spent the money buying all the stuff, and you can't yeah. get you know, stressed out about that. You look cute. You look cute, but you ain't do nothing. <laughs> no. Right. Look, you trend number two seconds. Man, I think we got a lot of great information tonight. I know I learned a lot for sure. Um, yes. You're taking away some great tips from tonight. Breathe. I'm definitely mm -hmm. going to breathe. I know those moments when those, you know, anxiety moments, something I suffer from as well. When mm -hmm. that hits, just breathe. Take your time. Get off the train. You can get back on the train. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so many great tips we learned tonight. I mean, I am uh, just so grateful that you 
all were able to join us tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I don't know if you want to get um, some last minute uh, information in before we get out of here uh, about contact um, and uh, with you and the company. Yeah, just throw out there, you know, I just want to uh, remind everybody about the health check. So anybody interested in, in uh, participating in that program can really just text health check to 211MD1, right? Health check to 211MD1. They can sign up, get connected. Mm -hmm. And I'll just say a piece just for um, for Shepherd Pratt. As I said, we are um, really, really fortunate to work for an organization that has what we'd like to call a true continuum of services. You know, we have from inpatient for behavioral health where, you know, to, to outpatient where we're helping you with your, your entitlements and your bills. You know, we have special in-home programs. We have residential, we have day program. Like I say, you, if you, this is so interesting. We're like the super Walmart of behavioral health. Yeah, super Walmart. <laughs> I'm, 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 because, you know, we, we almost, we, we literally have almost everything that you could need, you know, regarding your behavioral health. Um, and we're, we're all over, you know, so no, no matter where you're listening, there's a number at the bottom of the screen. Um, pick the number up and, and you know, give us a call and let us know what your needs are. But if you're in an urgent crisis, please, please, please hit my brother Quentin up with the 211, you know, um, to figure out what's going on. Natasha talked about a whole bunch of services. You know, we're all in this together. We are all in this together trying to do our best work and help our people be the best that they can be. For sure. Absolutely. Of course, for Springboard, you can always visit us on springboardmd.org. We're on Instagram, Facebook. You can call 410-366-1980. Um, so yeah, or you can call 201 and get connected to us too. So there you go. <laughs> I love how we all collabed and share different resources, different websites, and all the companies together. We're really trying to make a difference uh, here in the city and beyond. So thank you again for this amazing night. Hopefully everybody got great takeaways. Shout out again to Shepard Pratt. 211 Maryland Springboard Community Services. We appreciate all of you. Have an amazing rest of your night. Breathe and make some biscuits. Yeah. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>